Hi there and welcome to your yoga class. Today we are doing the throat chakra. So this is the chakra that's really related to sound and vibrations and it's all about harmony and creativity. Um, we're going to be doing a few shoulder openers, lots around our neck and maybe a shoulder stand too. So we're going to start off breathing today with Ujjayi breathing. Ujjayi is a Sanskrit for victorious breath and, and is sometimes described as Darth Vader breathing or ocean breath. So what you're doing is constricting the back of your throat very, very gently. And it's a full diaphragmatic breath. It begins in the lower belly, the first and second chakras, rises to the lower ribcage, third, third chakra, and finally moves up to the upper chest and the throat. Your chakras four and five. Just narrow in your throat passage and it will make, you know, that whispering sound. So just try it just now. And this, what it does is it attunes your awareness to, to each breath. And there is a wee bit of resistance there, which can take a little bit of getting used to. But just try and relax and you know, cross-legged or on your knees and just try your Ujjayi breathing. So what we're going to do is start by stretching our neck. So just let your left ear drop to your left shoulder. You can also hold it with your hand, just like I'm doing here, and also stretch out your right arm. See what feels good. Find a sweet spot and just pause here for a couple of breaths. So gently coming back up. Of course, we need to do it to the other side. So just gently dropping the head over. You don't have to have the hand on the head or the other hand out to the side. It's just whatever suits you. As long as you're feeling that nice big stretch up your left hand side now. So coming back to a nice seated position. We're going to drop our head over to the left shoulder and we're going to do sort of semicircles with our heads. So inhaling, coming down to the centre of your chest, rolling your head and exhale, coming back up. So your ears are meeting your shoulders at every side there. Inhaling in the way down, exhaling in the way up. Really nice and smooth, keeping your torso nice and straight. Just feeling the nice stretch on your shoulders and your neck in your own time, going at your own rhythm. So now we are going to sit up nice and tall and we're going to take our hands, clasp them behind our backs, push your hands towards the floor, give your head a wee wiggle if that feels good, stretch out that chest and the shoulders. And you can lift your chin up as well, don't throw your head back, but you can lift your chin up as well opening up our neck and shoulder area and let's do the same to the front so clasp the hands and push the back of the hands away from you and really sort of round your back over get that nice stretch between your shoulder blades it should feel quite nice then coming back in we're going to do a lateral shoulder stretch so bring your right hand across your body and use your left hand as a bit of resistance and again you should feel this right across your shoulder and your, your shoulder blade on the right hand side as much resistance as you need and then we'll do the same on the other side in a second too Give those shoulders a little shake out. And then we are going to come onto our knees now. Take your hands again, clasp them behind the back, send that chest up to the ceiling. You can lift your chin up as well if you want to. Whatever's available, really feel that stretch. And then what we're going to do is fold forward. Head on the mat if you can, lifting your arms up, really opening up those shoulders. If this is too much, you can unclasp your hands, no problem at all. But just lift it up. 
and helps to unblock your throat chakra as along with stretching the neck and the and the shoulders as well quite calming for the nervous system too so yep give your shoulders a wee shake if you want to and um, we're going to do a kind of variation of cat cow here untuck or tuck your toes but you're in tabletop so let's come up to cow pose and then when we come back to cat pose come back towards your heels you don't need to get right back to your heels but as long as you're inhaling pressing your stomach to the floor then exhaling coming back really nice and slow and gentle inhaling in the way up and exhaling on the way down as well a few of these getting into a really nice rhythm So we're going to do another version of cat cow now so you can do the normal version with your hands point fingers pointing forward but if you can switch them around to point to your knees get that lovely wrist stretch and then do your cat cows so see how it feels it might feel too much for you and in which case just do them with your fingers pointing forward but inhaling coming to the floor again exhaling back up to the ceiling this time and it should feel really nice bringing those hands back round again we're going to thread the needle this time so the left hand comes up and then we post it through between the right hand and the right knee keep those hips above the knees an option is is to put that left hand up in front of you on your fingertips and also you can put that right, right leg out the back as well if you want to all optional you can keep the leg and the hand in if you want to it's all about opening the shoulders So coming back up, put the hand back up there, we need to do the other side of course, so right hand up in there, posting it through, and the left hand and the left knee, you can raise that top hand if you want to, and the leg, all optional, as long as you're feeling that nice stretch across your shoulders, staying here for a few breaths. So let's come up to our first downward dog. Put your bottom straight up in the air. You might want to crawl the hands forward a little bit. But remember, you can bend your knees in downward dog and keep the back straight. Or you might want your legs straight. And this time, we're going to do a really wide downward dog. Look where my feet are. They're right out to the edge of the mat. So a really wide downward dog today, opening everything up. Give the legs a nice stretch. Wiggle the hips. Pedal the legs. Do whatever feels good to you. And we're going to lift the left leg up in there in the three-legged dog. And we're going to bring it the left knee down to be behind the left wrist. Coming into pigeon pose. Bring the right leg back, top of the foot on the floor. And you can stay up like this, okay? Most important thing here is your sit bones. Keep them even. You can even prop one side up with a block. Or come down to your elbows or come right down to the floor. But seat bones, most important here. Doesn't matter too much where your front foot is as long as that knee is up and if this is too much for you as well you can sit up a little bit and bend that back leg okay that's another option for you if the pigeon just is too much but don't worry if you're not anywhere near the floor in pigeon um it's all about the the you know the, the weight being equal on your hips so just be mindful of that as you take your few breaths So to come out of this one, tuck that back toe, come up nice and slowly and we're going to come up to downward dog again, stretching it out and ready to do the other side, remember wide downward dog today, and lifting the right leg up just as far as it will go, bringing the right knee to the right wrist, 
scooching that back leg back, top of the foot on the floor, get yourself comfy, get those hips even, and you can sit up like this. Although this is quite a back bend, you know, you, it looks like it's just sitting up, but you'll feel it. It will feel like a back bend if you're if you're up nice and straight, uh, or you can come down onto your elbows, or right down, or your head might be in a block, and stay in here for a few breaths. So coming back up again to downward dog by tucking the back toe and take your time coming up because it can feel quite stretchy and still pedaling it out if you need to as well but let's lift that left leg up again okay and this time you're going to bring the left foot to in between the hands or as close to the hands as you can get it. Now you can pop that back knee down as well or just come up to your crescent lunge here and clasp the hands behind the back and lift the chest so that back knee can be down remember watch the front knee is over the ankle at the front pausing here and then pop the right hand on the floor left hand up to the ceiling for an easy twist so balance is a little bit challenging remember you can keep that back knee down so let's come to a plank pose now and we're going to lower to the floor. You can pause before you hit the floor if you like. And we're going to come up to cobra pose. So arms with a bit of bend in them. Chest nice and open. Shoulders nice and relaxed. Pelvis is pushing into the floor. Feel the nice stretch up your body. And then tuck in your toes. You come up to tabletop first or straight up to downward dog. Up to you. Remember in that wide stance. Stretch it all off. And we're going to do it all again on the other side so the turn of the right leg this time remember coming through to between your hands or there or thereabouts and coming up to high lunge with the option of that back knee being down bringing your hands behind your back clasping them pushing them towards the floor lifting up that chest and from there coming forward and putting your left hand on the floor this time and coming up to an easy twist. So when we're twisting, we're trying to get that right shoulder back. You can look up or look to the side, it's up to you. Hands on the floor, back to plank. Let's lower to chaturanga or just straight down if you want to and up to cobra. Just pause there for a couple of beats before coming up to your downward dog and we'll all meet back in downward dog. So bending that right knee, let's really stretch out that left leg and the same on the other side. Remember the heels don't need to come to the floor, the stretch in the leg is the most important thing here. So let's bring that left leg up again, bringing it through like we did before. Now let's plant that back foot, okay, might be parallel to the side of your mat and let's come straight up to a warrior two, arms out. Uh, nice and straight looking along your front arm watch the front knee doesn't fall in lovely strong legs here and then take your left elbow pop it on your left knee and let's come into an extended side angle pose okay lovely big stretch up the entire side of the body coming back to warrior two just for a second because you're going to straighten that front leg and we're coming into triangle pose so move over your front foot first then put the back of the left hand on the calf and that top arm is going to come alongside your ear as well and your front leg doesn't need to be completely straight there can be a wee bend in it not too much but there can be a little bend in it so coming up with nice straight arms again bend into the front knee for warrior two just briefly so that you can put your hands back on the floor step back to downward dog let's stretch it out so that we can do the other side right leg up in the air coming through get your foot nice and secure plant the back foot and come up to warrior two on the other side 
nice straight arms dropping the pelvis and then taking that elbow at the front coming into extended side angle pose pausing there for a couple of breaths really stretching the side of the body back to warrior briefly triangle remember to move out over that front foot when you do a triangle back of the hand on the calf with the knee of the thigh and the top arm along your ear So just coming back to warrior two briefly so that we can cartwheel the hands down onto the floor. Stepping back straight into downward dog. Just pausing there, feeling the stretch after those warriors and triangles. So let's step or walk to the front of the, the mat and let's straighten our arms and straighten our back. So you, they might be on your knees or the floor, okay? And let's take a fold forward. Now remember those knees can be bent. They don't have to be totally straight. And sort of trace your hands up your legs so that you come to that nice straight leg position again. Fold forward on an exhale. Remember the legs can be bent. Then tracing your hands up again to come to the nice straight back. And then exhaling forward folding again. Doing this a couple more times. Inhale up to the half lift position. Exhaling to a forward fold. So let's put our hands on the mat again. Let's step back to a plank pose. You can always come down in your knees here. Lowering down to the floor, coming up to cobra or an upward dog if you prefer. Pushing back to downward dog once more. Pedaling those legs if you need to. So let's lift the left leg up again. And we're going to come into pigeon again. Remember we did this at the beginning? Pigeon again with a bit of a variation if you want to. You can sit up just like we did before. Equal seat bones. Or coming down and if you come down what you can do is you can actually walk your hands out to the right as well so you're getting away a bit of curvature in the spine um, if you want to you can just do the, the version that we did before if, if you like just an option to side stretch while we're in our pigeon pose so coming back up and tuck in the back toe, downward dog, just to stretch off a little bit after that. And then we're going to come down onto our bottom, have your right knee pointing forward and cross your left leg over. Now, your leg might not cross that much, that's fine. Or you might be able to cross it over and get your knees stacking. Just like this, holding on to your feet. Back nice and straight, opening up that chest. And if you want to take it a little bit further, you can twist. So twisting towards the, the left knee on top. You can look behind you if you want as well. So coming back round to the front, let's windscreen wipe our legs a little bit. That can feel quite nice after that. And then just coming back up to a downward dog or a tabletop if you're getting a little tired by now. Tabletop's absolutely fine. And let's do the other side. So right leg up, then right knee comes to behind the right wrist. Coming into pigeon pose on that side. Sitting up, coming on your elbows, whatever suits. And again, you can side, you know, bend to the left this time. If you want to, if you think that's going to feel good for you. So coming up nice and slowly again, stretching off briefly in downward dog and then we're going to do that Gomukhasana pose that we did before. So this time the left knee is pointing forward towards the front of the mat, cross your right leg over as much as it will go. Knees might be stacking, they might be nowhere near stacking. 
and get yourself nice and comfortable feeling the nice stretch on your right thigh and glute sitting just holding on to your feet if you can or you might want to do that little twist keeping the back straight twisting round away from the leg that's crossed over coming back let's do our windscreen wiper once more So this time, let's come into butterfly pose so the soles of your feet are together, your back is nice and straight. And just holding on to your feet, try and keep your back straight as you can, lifting up your chest. Feeling the opening in your legs. And if you want to, you can hinge forward a little bit as well. But it's mainly about keeping your chest up. slowly sitting back up again we're going to do a little passive version of this so this time the head curls over top of the hands on the mat you may want to adjust the feet as well but a really nice forward curve with the spine there just really relax into that just for a few breaths So sitting back up, we're going to come down on our backs this time for a little bit of a shoulder stand variation. So variation one, legs up in the air, feet pressing against the ceiling. Variation two, you can do a half shoulder stand, which means just lifting that bottom off, support it with your, uh, your hands and your legs are a bit bent and they are pointing at sort of a diagonal or you can come up into full shoulder stand, pointing the toes, legs as straight as you can. Try and relax the shoulders and relax the neck to as much as you can. Then if you want to, you can come back to plough or you can just stay there. So gently lowering the feet down until the, the toenails basically come to the floor and put your hands on the floor as well. But only do that if you're totally comfortable and watch that lower back as well. So really gingerly coming out of this. We don't want to hurt anything at all. Because it's sporting the back the whole way. Gently rolling back down. And you might want to sit up and just have a little bit. You can have any sort of pose after that you want. You can have a child's pose or bring your knees into your chest. I think a forward fold can be quite nice. Paschimottanasana. Curling the head forward. Nice and relaxed. So let's lie down on our backs now and bring our knees into our chest. Have a wee rock side to side. We're going to have a happy baby pose. So holding on to the outside of those feet. Just pulling your feet down and back towards you. Opening up those hips. And you can straighten your legs as well if you want. Just see how that feels. Really relax into it. Rocking from side to side. Letting go of all that tension. Feeling your back flat on the floor. And then just letting your feet go and let us have a really nice shavasana at the end of our practice. So taking up some room with your feet, top of the hands on the floor and just relax for a few minutes, getting the benefits of your practice.
So just starting to bring yourself back into the room, wriggling your fingers and toes, doing whatever feels good, just to wake yourself up. And be bending your knees, rolling onto your side. Before sitting up nice and slowly. Sitting with your legs crossed and your hands at your heart. So we're going to finish with three cleansing breaths here. Nice big deep ocean breath. So take a nice big deep breath in and a big <sighs> on the way out. Three of these all together in through the nose and <sighs> out through the mouth. Feels really nice and revitalizing actually. And let's finish with a, a namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for your throat chakra class. Please subscribe to the channel and that means you'll get all the new classes that get released. And I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you again soon. See you later.